in special theory of relativity, if I can just give you a quick run through, what happens is we are going to consider frames of reference, which is very important. So maybe you are on the Earth and you are observing a moving object. The time that you measure will be different if that object was on the Earth itself. Okay, so it depends on which frame of reference you are measuring it. Of course, it depends on what is the velocity. So if the velocity is very high, the time measure will be different. If the velocity is very low, it will be same or similar to whatever you measure on Earth. So that is actually the frame of reference. The syllabus is basically dealing with special theory of relativity. In special theory of relativity, there are three things that we should know. First thing, we only consider a constant velocity system. We are not going to consider a system which is accelerating. So no acceleration involved. My idea or generation of the mathematical formulation is going to be much more easy. Next, it's a linear motion. So it will move along the x-axis or the y-axis or the z-axis. So it's just going to go from one point to the other following a linear motion. And next, it's an inertial system. What do I mean by inertial system? This is also something which I've explained. If we talk about Newton's law, if it is working in a frame of reference, that is called an inertial system. And if the Newton's law does not work, okay, or is not applicable in that system, that's a non-inertial system. What is an example of a non-inertial system? Maybe this, or maybe you are in a bus, and the bus is moving, it applies a brake and you fall ahead because of the inertial force. That is a non-inertial system. But then such system must also be defined. So that means the force that is acting on you is not acting directly but it's a pseudo force. So we'll consider that pseudo force to define that system. OK, so if you have a bottle and if you have a rope and you are tying a ball to it and you're applying some force and allowing the bottle to move ahead, the ball will be pushed back. And the force that is acting on this ball is the pseudo force. OK, but the good thing is you are not going to study this because that is not the part of the syllabus. We're just going to consider the inertial system. So that means if I have a body, let's say your friend is on a bus and the bus is moving with a velocity V and you are on the ground, the velocity V with which your friend is moving is constant. Because of which the uh, system is also inertial in nature. OK, that's the idea. So based on this, we are going to do or find transformation equation today. What do I mean by transformation equation? OK, this is something which you are going to explain. OK, so let me just start and then I think it will be a bit more clear to you because, you know, this is anyway just this much of idea is enough to understand transformation or Galilean transformation specifically. OK, now let's just start. Okay, Let's go a bit slow. So I have got two frames of reference. OK, let's say the first frame of reference is this. Just the first frame of reference. OK, and then I have got another frame of reference, which is let's say this. And both of them, let's say, you know, are on the same line. May not be very perfect, but then I hope you understand this. They are in two different frames of reference. I'm not representing the Z axis. I can do it, but then even if I don't do it, we understand that the Z axis is having no motion involved. So this is the unprimed frame. That means, you know, if if I just uh, explain what is a primed frame and an unprimed frame, the ones who have not attended the last class, the, this is the unprimed frame, so I don't, you know, uh, put a dash in top and here I'll just put a prime sign. So that is a prime frame, just a way to differentiate these two frames of reference. So this is, let's say, the y axis and this is your x axis. This is your y prime and this is your x prime. OK, and if I have a point P, and I want to define its position with respect to this. I will have the coordinates as X, Y, and Z. I've not represented Z, but we can do it anyway. I'll show it. And the time is, let's say, T. On the other hand, if I want to define this position with respect to this frame of reference, the coordinates would be X dash, Y dash, Z dash, and time t dash. Okay. Since I'm involving, uh, you know, z coordinate, so maybe I will just uh, draw it here. Okay. Z coordinate here. One other And uh, maybe for this also I'll make it. So we have got the z coordinate. Okay. 
and uh, as well. So this is your Z prime. This is your Z. Now what's what is happening here? That this particular frame of reference is actually moving with a velocity v. So it is moving with a velocity v, which is actually constant. And that's why this is also an inertial frame. This is also an inertial frame. Okay, this is in mo not in motion, zero velocity, and this is moving with a velocity v with respect to this. Okay, so if this is moving, the point p is also receding away from this. Okay, now if I actually want to measure the distance, okay, if I want to measure the distance, let's say, uh, let me just do it this way. If I just want to measure the distance, okay, on the x axis, let's say, what I will do is, I will uh, simply, you know, take it from here to there. So from here, from this, sorry, this origin to this will be x dash, right? This is your x prime because it's a prime frame. And I can also measure the distance from here to here. So if I want to measure the distance from, let's say, here to this point P, okay, that also can be measured. And uh, that would be X. So this distance would be X. Okay. Now this is moving with a velocity V and as we all know velocity is equal to distance divided by time. So that means if I want to measure the distance, this would be velocity into time. This is moving with a velocity V it must have started at some point and it kept on moving so that the distance that it has covered okay the distance that it has covered from here to here okay from here to here okay what's that distance that distance is vt okay? that distance that we are talking about here is this to this is vt because distance is velocity into time so this is basically the representation or the diagrammatic representation for understanding Galilean transformation. Okay, and if you understand this, you can easily write down what is Galilean transformation. As I said, by transformation we mean the relation between the x and the x dash coordinate, y and the y dash coordinate, z and the z dash coordinate, t and the t dash uh, coordinate. Okay, so what we can do here is we can say simply, therefore, x. So x is this total distance. This is a linear motion. Total distance is equal to this distance vt plus x prime. So we can just simply write it down as vt plus x prime. That's my x and x coordinate relation. Okay. Or uh, what we can write down here is I can take x prime. That's the transformation is equal to x minus vt because x was the point where it started so i just want to connect this and this so this is you know there is a uh, inverse relation also we are going to write that down that is very simple that's the same thing okay i'm just going to write it down in the other way i'm going to do it later and y prime is equal to y why because there is no motion along the y-axis and of course z prime is equal to z why because there is no motion along the z-axis okay so in a similar way we can also write it down as Okay, we can write it down as x is equal to vt plus x prime, vt prime plus x prime. Okay, and we can also write it down as y is equal to y prime, and this is z is equal to z prime. Okay, and t will remain as t prime. Okay, because you know for low velocity, okay, for low velocity for low velocity t will remain as t prime okay low velocity so we are saying that this velocity is not very high it is not moving with the speed of light okay this is important so when we actually write down this okay and when we actually write down the inverse transformation we have to just remember one thing that and the inverse transformation maybe this is at rest and this is moving so we are not doing the calculation. What we are doing simply is in place of V, we are putting in place of V, we are putting it as minus V. And in place of T, we are writing it down as T prime. So in place of T, we are writing it down as T prime. Okay. And X and M, X prime are interchanged. 
x and x prime are interchanged. So you can see here in place of x prime, I'm writing x. In place of x, I'm writing down x prime. In place of v, I'm writing it down as minus v. So this minus minus will become plus. And in place of t, I'm writing it down as t prime. Okay, so that's the inverse that we have done. Okay, so whether you take this or you take this, of course, uh, t is equal to t prime is also involved there. Okay, so let me just write it down. T is equal to T prime. Both are actually Galilean transformation. So this is also Galilean transformation. So for your exam point of view, if I'm asking you to do the Galilean transformation, the complete answer would be both of them. Okay. This is Galilean transformation and this is also Galilean transformation. Both are Galilean transformation. So the idea is simple. Okay, we are just going to find out a relation between the prime frame and the unprime frame. That's it. Okay, so both are Galilean transformation, but you have to just remember that these are valid for low velocity. Okay, this is valid for low velocity. So that's very important. Okay. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to, you know, check this Galilean transformation in terms of Newton's law. So we know the term variance and invariance. Okay, we know the term variance and invariance. So what we are going to do is the topic heading would be invariance of Newton's laws in variance of Newton's laws. So what do I mean by invariance? Invariance means that the laws does not change. So if I consider one frame of reference, or the other frame of reference in both the frames of reference, Newton's law would be valid. Are there cases where the laws are not valid? Yes, but may not be for Newton's law in special theory of relativity, but we will see that it may be for the Maxwell's equation. So we're going to look into that later. Okay, so let's just uh, talk about uh, velocity. So if we are considering, you know, the rate of change of velocity with respect to the x axis, we say it is dx divided by dt. If we talk about the rate of change of velocity with the y axis, it is dy by dt. Okay. And if we talk about the velocity with respect to the z axis, it is dz divided by dt. Right. Now, this is actually the change in the unprimed system. I'm not going to draw that primed and unprimed system. I hope you understand it. Okay. So a similar change will also be observed in the prime system. So in the prime system, we can say it is Vx prime is equal to Dx prime by dt. Okay. And just to be clear that uh, what is the relation between x prime and x, we are actually going to use this. Okay. So this is again very important. So what we're going to do is uh, maybe we can just uh, copy this in the next slide and just keep it there handy so that all of us, you know, since we just started, so let's just keep this here. So this is the transformation equation that we have here. Okay. So we're just going to use it. So So uh, we have it as this relation. Okay, so we are going to use x minus vt in place of x prime. So we just do it. Uh, we can just simply write it down as d dt of x minus vt. Okay, and this is equal to you know, dx by dt minus v is a constant velocity. So we can just write it down as dt by dt. Right. So what is dx by dt? Vx. I'll tell you what is Vx and what is V. There is a difference. Okay. We'll just write it down at the bottom, but I hope you understand this. It's not very complicated. So this would be Vx minus V. So that's Vx dash. So you see Vx prime is different from Vx. Okay. That's the one thing that we have seen now. And then similarly, we can write it down. What is Vy prime? So uh, Vy prime is equal to dy prime dt. Okay. And y prime and y are equal. Y and y prime are equal. So we can just simply write it down as dy by dt, which is nothing but Vy. So that means Vy prime is equal to Vy. That's the relation we have. 
similarly with vz prime so vz prime is dz prime by dt which is equal to dz by dt is equal to vz so what we have here is this v x prime is equal to vx minus v okay so the you know if you, if you understand it it's fine else so i'll just write it down what is v v is the velocity of the primed frame okay so i'll just write it down maybe velocity of s prime with respect to v okay so what is the velocity of s prime okay with respect to sorry s right so that's the v that we have seen and what is vx now there might be a particle p or the point p that we are talking about if that has a velocity that will be represented as the velocity of that particle so this vx is nothing but the velocity of particle we are just writing down the general case there might be a frame of reference which is moving but at the same time the particle might also move so that's why we have considered v and vx separately okay so there is always chances that both of them will be applicable okay so uh, you know if you have basically a point here let's say p okay uh, you are basically having a coordinate as x y z and let's say after some time it reaches a point okay let's say another point p prime okay and it has got displaced by a very small distance okay i hope all of us know this that the coordinates here would be nothing but x plus dx since it's moving only along the x axis y remains the same z remains the same okay and the time may be considered to be t plus dt okay although you don't need to include this in your notes but i'm just telling this because we are going to you know you must have this idea that whenever we are saying something like dx okay or whenever we are saying something like dt what does it refer to it refers to a very very small change okay a very small uh, distance that we are talking about here okay that's important so uh, what we have here is some relations that we have derived the first relation is vx prime is equal to vx minus v and then we have got vy prime is equal to vy and then we have got vz prime is equal to vz so we have derived this in the last slide and what are these these are velocity transformation equation so these are velocity transformation equation okay so we have checked for position x y z and we have found out the relation between x x prime y y prime z z prime now we have checked for velocity and we have found out the relation between v uh, x prime and v x and so on okay let's check for acceleration now okay now let's check for acceleration okay so in acceleration you know we can easily do it very easy a x prime is equal to d v x prime dt prime and dt prime and dt are same because we are talking about low velocity system so i can just simply write it down as ddt so every time you just write down ddt also then also it should be fine okay so ddt of vx prime so vx prime is vx minus v so I'll just replace it with vx minus v okay which is equal to dvx by dt minus dv by dt but we did mention because we are talking about special theory of relativity this v is actually a constant velocity so that means the rate of change with time would be zero right so that means dv dt is equal to zero that means this is simply dvx dt so dvx dt means it's just ax acceleration okay similarly if we just talk about this similarly if we just say or check for y We'll see that a y dash is equal to a y and uh, a z dash is equal to a z this is the entire idea of having an inertial system you see there is no change in acceleration in the x y or z axis y or z anyway we expect there is no change but the velocity you know is along the x axis so we might think that okay there might be an acceleration but mathematically it can be seen 
that there is no acceleration along the x axis. OK, so that means if I take a relation force is equal to mass into acceleration in one frame, then in the other frame also this will be force is equal to mass into acceleration. The acceleration doesn't have another component there. OK, and that is why it is invariant. OK, so what we can say in concluding lines, concluding lines would be this is important prove that Newton's law is invariant, you know, in a constant velocity system maybe. Hence, the acceleration is same, OK? That's the same, doesn't change in both frames. Very important in both frames. In an inertial frame, OK? So uh, it may be an inertial frame or we can also say Galilean transformation system. Galilean transformation system. What may be the possible question for your exam? A question might be show that Newton's law is invariant in a Galilean transformation system or in an inertial frame. System. OK, uh, you can just uh, add certain points to it. OK, the point is here. Um, in S frame, we have got force is equal to mass into acceleration. Okay, and in S prime frame. Uh, you know, this force is equal to maybe I can just write it down as M prime A prime, but mass doesn't change because we are not saying that the body is moving with a very high velocity. If the velocity is very high, then we can talk about relativistic mass. We are not considering that. So mass will remain as M. And just now we have seen that the acceleration also doesn't change. It is prime frame or the unprime frame. The acceleration remains as A. So F into A, it is F. Therefore, uh, you know, F prime, the force in the prime frame is equal to the force which is acting in the unprime frame. And if that is the case, okay, if that is the case, we simply say that this actually is invariant or remains invariant and does not change. Okay. So a statement which is uh, very important, okay, uh, uh, which is again, you know, can be considered to be a concluding remark here, okay. The Newton's laws, okay, let me write it down here. Newton's law is invariant in all frames. of reference under Galilean transformation of reference under Galilean transformation. OK, so you have to remember these statements. So whenever you know I'm asking you a question and in case I'm evaluating, I do consider that you write down the physics correctly. OK, so sentence is not an issue. Grammatical mistake, not an issue. But whenever you write down, please make sure that you know you are explaining it properly line by line. OK, that is expected. OK, so uh, they're, they're based on this. OK, we actually have got a principle which is actually called the principle of relativity. OK, this is the principle of. Relativity. So it might be an objective question of one or two marks, OK? And maybe the question would actually have a tail to it or maybe just ask what is principle of relativity or just explain principle of relativity, OK? So the principle of relativity, if you just check, it states that it's not an exact statement. There might be slight change in sentences, OK? Laws of physics. Are same. in all frames of reference okay 
and the Galilean transformation. So this statement would be, you know, this is the thing that we have done in the last uh, slide. But then, you know, this is the statement that you should give when you are actually talking about uh, the principle of relativity. That's the principle of relativity. If you want to explain it, you know, if I ask you to explain it and I give you around, let's say, five marks for this or six marks for this, you just prove whatever we have done in the last slide. OK, so just go for it. Just try to prove this. OK, and then you will actually able to get your full marks. That's important. OK, now the question is, if I say that uh, it is, you know, uh, invariant the Newton's law does it mean that uh, whatever we know in physics will actually remain invariant the answer is no and that actually leads to the idea of uh, Mitchelson Morley experiment okay so if you check your syllabus okay I have already uploaded that in the file section you can check it later so if you check your syllabus you know it will have that uh, part where you know Mitchelson Morley experiment is uh, mentioned so Mitchelson Morley experiment, the basis or why Mitchelson and Morley has done that experiment will begin from now. Okay. What is the reason? The reason was non-variance or invariance of Maxwell's equation. Okay. So let me just take a fresh page. Okay. We are starting with this non-variance, non-invariance. Okay. So you know invariance means it does not change. So the topic is non-invariance. So it changes, it means okay. Invariance. Of Maxwell's equation. So before we start, I should we should we should write it down. You might have already done it in your class 11 or 12. You might know what is Maxwell's equation, right? But then Maxwell's equation uh, is very important when we are talking about electromagnetism. The entire you know theory of electromagnetism is based on these four laws. Okay. So let's write down Maxwell's equation first and then we can actually proceed. So the thing is Maxwell's equation. There are certain derivations which I'm not going to do. Uh, you should know it. OK, the first is when I'm just write, going to write down the differential form in terms of the Laplacian operator del bar dot E bar is equal to rho by epsilon naught. OK. Number two, tell cross, okay, Laplacian operator. So you can just take a bar here, cross E is equal to minus of del B by del T, right? Number three, we can have it as del bar dot B bar is equal to zero. And four is del bar cross b bar is equal to mu naught j bar. That was actually the original ampere circuital law, and then Maxwell came up with the correction mu naught epsilon naught del e bar del t. Can anyone tell me what is this law called? The first law? Anyone? Uh, Gauss law. Gauss law, right? So this, we basically say that this is the Gauss's law, but then just uh, to be specific in electricity, right? Okay, and this is, uh, or electrostatics also, do, do say that, okay? And this is also the Gauss's law, but this is in magnetostatics. Gauss's law in magnetostatics. What about this one? Minus of del B by del T? Faraday's law. Faraday's law. So you people might also, you know, design projects and all based on these laws, right? Faraday's law. And this one is Ampere's law, right? So this was actually the corrected law which was given by Ampere, Ampere's law. So, you thought revise over I think this is important again. So, you know, uh, inside somewhere, all of us have started our engineering course in class 11 itself, okay? Because, you know, physics and engineering are very closely related. So, since we all have done these things, these things will actually, you know, be being applied somewhere, okay? This is very important. 
So uh, this uh, non invariance of Maxwell's equation, it simply means that if we are actually using the Galilean transformation, OK, so I'll just put up a sentence here under. Maybe you should all remember this under Galilean transformation. The relations are. The relations are. Non invariant. That means the Maxwell's law. See, it was a thought at that time. OK. I'm just going to check that. Uh, under if you use, uh, you know, this Maxwell's equation in one frame of reference, and if you check it in the other frame of reference, both of them are going to be different. OK, and that's why the Galilean transformation becomes invariant. When we talk about the Newton's law, we are basically talking about acceleration part, mass into acceleration. That's the main part, right? So there, if that does not change, we can say it is invariant. But here it is non invariant. Why and how? That is something which we are going to prove, OK, qualitatively. So that's uh, very important. Just just give me a moment. So, uh, you know, this is non invariant. So let's just check few things here and why we do say that it is non invariant. OK, it's a very interesting argument that we are going to put ahead. OK, and this is basically not a quantitative idea. This is a qualitative idea. So in order to understand this, you know, you have to understand the logic behind this. So we're just going to explain that. So whenever you are studying about Maxwell's equation, there are a lot of wave equations that come into picture. And the wave equations that we usually deal with is are these. We are not going to derive them. OK, so we basically have. The wave equation and we have got them separately for the electrostatic part and the magnetostatic part. OK, wave equation. Uh, the first one is delta square. E bar. Is equal to one by. C square and uh, delta square E. Delta T square. So at some point of time, if you study electromagnetism, you might have derived it, but we are not going to derive it now. Okay, we are going to give an argument on why, you know, the speed of light cannot be different in different media, and that's why we are doing it. Okay. Similarly, you can just do it for the magnetic field also. Delta square B is equal to one by C square, and delta square B, delta T square. So if I say that you know light is an electromagnetic wave, the visible light, the you know microwave, gamma rays, whatever, these are all electromagnetic waves. So they will both have the electric component and the magnetic component. And if you want to define you know the motion of this, we really need to have an equation. So if you want to derive, uh, define the motion of that particular electric field or a magnetic field which is in the waveform, we are going to use this relation. This is where it comes from. Okay, and we also know that the C that we have is actually the speed of light. OK, and uh, if we just put the value of uh, epsilon naught and mu naught, where epsilon naught is the relative permittivity related with the electric field and mu naught is the relative permeability. OK, uh, uh, and mu is the relative permeability. And if we put the values, we can actually get the speed of light. So when we talk about epsilon naught, means we are talking about permittivity in free space and mu naught is nothing but the permeability in free space. OK, so. Uh, that value that we actually have from here after calculation is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Now this was given by Maxwell, okay? And from here we know actually this is the speed of the electromagnetic wave. Now if you talk about the maximum speed, you know, uh, we're talking about actually the speed of light, okay? So that is 3 into 10 to the power 8. So the next idea is 
since we actually actually have talked about uh, velocity, we can simply say that since OK, let me just write down this sentence. Vx prime is equal to Vx minus V. We have seen it in the last last slide. OK, what we conclude is we conclude. Now these arguments are important, so I prefer writing them down for you that velocity. OK. Is different in different frames, right? Different. In different frames. Now let's imagine we are actually in the Maxwell's age, OK, or maybe it's. The time when people didn't knew that the speed of light was C and it is constant in all reference frame. OK, it simply means. That. Uh, here we are talking about the normal standard velocity, which we can actually realize if you're talking about a very high velocity and this is actually the speed that we're talking about as per this. This velocity should also be different. That means the speed of light should be different in different frames of reference. This is we have something which we've already seen and we've concluded that the velocity will be different in different frames. So from this particular argument, we can straight away say that the speed of light should also be different in different frames. Okay, because that is also speed, so it should also be different. Okay. So uh, what what Maxwell said was okay uh, because. Um, I, I, I'm sure that you will get confused here. That's why I just want to write down the sentences so that you can you can make your notes. But as far Maxwell's equation, the question might be what led, uh, you know, Michelson Morley to perform the experiment where they showed that the speed of light is constant in any medium. But until now, whatever we idea we have developed, we see that the velocity will be different in different medium because of this relation. This one relation tells me that the velocity will be different in different medium. Okay, but as per Maxwell's you know equation. We have seen above C is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. OK, and uh, uh, we as part the thought, OK, this was already done. This velocity was already calculated and as per this idea that the velocity will be different in different frames of reference. They said or they imagined at that point of time when it was still not proved that the speed of light is same in all the medium. It was said that it may be true. OK, for a particular medium may be true. For a particular medium. So the scientists tend to give names to such things, OK, where you know they are basically trying to, you know, they really don't know the property of it, but they really need that to actually explain the system. For example, X-rays, OK? Properties was unknown, so just written as X, so that's X-ray, right? Similarly, a medium was imagined and that imaginative medium was ether, OK? That was ether. So it was an imaginative medium where it was said that the speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second, OK? Let me just repeat. In ether, the speed of light was 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. In other medium, the speed of light might be different. That was what was assumed at that time. So imagine you are from that era where people didn't knew that the speed of light will be different in different medium. And one fine day you read in a newspaper that Maxwell has calculated the speed of light to be this. And then he said that this might be the speed of light in a particular medium. In the next day you see that which medium then they are arguing. OK, let's have a medium which is called ether. OK, so this is something which is there. So a very important question is a very important question is. From this particular argument, okay, does it mean, okay? So maybe I can just write it this way. This is very important. You have to ask yourself this question. That time they did ask this question, and that's why the answer is there. Does this mean the speed of light, okay, is different in different medium? Is different in different medium. That was the question which was asked. How to prove who will prove it? That was actually proved by Michelson Morley experiment. OK, so what happened was in order to prove this. OK. Very important. Maybe you can write it in red. To confirm. It's 
इसको थोड़ा ऊपर ले लेते हैं टू कन्फर्म स्पीड ऑफ लाइट what happened was michelson and morley has performed their experiment okay so michelson okay morley experiment was performed okay michelson morley experiment so if you look into your syllabus the first part is actually michelson morley experiment and this is what we are going to do mm -hmm.